have a, a lot to be thankful for truly and we are going to look at several things today. If you want to be turning to Psalm 95, uh, be turning to Psalm 95, we're going to look at verse 2. But one thing, when, when Thanksgiving is coming up, and I know that, you know, we, we look at Thanksgiving and we see uh, pilgrims, you may see Indians, you might see turkeys, you might see uh, all different types of things. And if you ask people uh, Thursday while well, everybody's eating, you ask them, what are you thankful for? You might hear some people are thankful for turkey or sweet potatoes or, you know, cheesecake, which, by the way, nothing wrong with any of that. Uh, good, uh, especially if you put like marshmallows on the sweet potato casserole, stuff like that. That's nothing wrong with that, but people may bring that up or they'll stay family, which again, nothing wrong with that. Uh, but we have so much to be thankful for. So much to be thankful for. And that's what this morning we're going to be looking at and what real Thanksgiving is. And real Thanksgiving is going to be being thankful to God. And we're going to look at a few things that God has done for us or some things in the Scriptures that we should be thankful for. And it's going to be nothing groundbreaking, but it's hopefully going to remind us and put it on our hearts so that we can be in remembrance of it so that come Thursday uh, we'll, we'll have God on our hearts and have true thanksgiving in our hearts. And so we're going to do something slightly different this morning. If you want to, you can stand up while we read this morning's verse and then go to the Lord in prayer. If you're really thanks, uh, full of thanksgiving, we should desire that. So what's Psalm 95, verse 2 says, says, Let us come before His presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto Him with psalms. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, so much for being our God. We thank you so much for the grace and mercy you have. Father, we thank you so much for Jesus Christ and his sacrifice on the cross. We thank you so much for the empty tomb. Father, we thank you so much for our salvation. And we pray that if there be one here that does not know Christ as their Savior, Lord, that they would come forward this morning, they would accept Jesus as their Savior, and that they could leave here, Lord, thankful for him. Father, we just lift up all the prayer requests that have been mentioned. We lift up all those that are traveling. We lift up those that are sick. Father, we thank you and praise you for the health of this new baby. Father, we just praise you for everything you do for us, and we ask that you use your Holy Spirit to illuminate the Scriptures this morning, that everything that is said and done is according to your will, that it would help us to grow, that we could leave here, Lord, understanding how much we have to be thankful for and being more thankful than when we came in. Father, we praise you for all these things, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Look in there again, Psalm 95, 2. Think about this. It says, let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Now, I could ask for a show of hands, but it might break everybody's heart. But this morning when you woke up, how many went, hey, today's Sunday, and in your heart you were thankful that you could come to church? I think most of us hopefully were. If not, uh, the altars will be are open. You can repent at any time. You don't have to wait to the end. But we should wake up being thankful. And honestly, we should wake up every day being thankful that we get to serve God today. Amen. Thankful that we have a loving God. Thankful that we have a wonderful Savior. Thankful that He loved us, that he, Jesus Christ died for us. Thankful that He paid that price for us. None of us wanted to go to the cross. We all deserve the cross, but none of us just wanted to go to that. But Jesus went to the cross and did it for all of us. So we should come before His presence with thanksgiving. And it says, Make a joyful noise unto Him with psalms. Lift up your voice in praise. And so this morning can be a wonderful thanksgiving service by praising God. By praising Him for everything. So we are going to look at a few things, first and foremost, that we can praise God for. Number one, turn to Psalm 106. This is probably a page or two over. Look at 106 Psalm. We're going to look at verse 1. The 106 Psalm. Look at verse 1. It says, Praise ye the Lord. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endureth forever. So number one, we should be thankful for God Himself. Everything else that we're going to talk about today comes from God Himself. And right there it says, Praise ye the Lord, give thanks. Have you given, and what is God, look at this. Look what we have to give God thanks for. It says, For He is good. Is God good? Amen. Absolutely. Man, God's good. We should be thankful for that. And why? It says, For His mercy endureth forever. Has God been merciful to you? Absolutely. 
so merciful. It says it endures forever. He's not just saying, all right, I'll forgive you today. And then tomorrow he's like, all right, I'm done. No, he continually forgives us. And once we're forgiven, once we're saved, once we're back into fellowship with him, we can distance ourselves from him. We can muddle the waters, but we cannot lose it. We cannot lose that mercy. And so we should realize that God, first and foremost, we should wake up uh, thankful for Him. And the book of Job, we've been looking at, it's a great thing. Job is sitting there. Job's lost everything. Job's saying, why, God, why? And God comes in a whirlwind and talks to him and says, Job, who are you to question me? We should be thankful that God is in control of the world, not us. We'd mess it up. I mean, look at us. You know what? Some of us have problems balancing checkbooks, have problems keeping your house clean. We have problems planning things. We show up late. I mean, just all the different things humans mess up. And look at our world. Our world's messed up because of humans. Can you imagine that? I praise God that God is God and not us because we'd mess it all up. Think about that. We'd mess it up. We should be thankful that God is God. So first and foremost, we need to be thankful for God. And the second one's kind of, it's not even number two, it's like point 1A, because Jesus and God are the same. But turn to Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2. Not only should we be thankful for God, we should be thankful for Jesus. And yes, Jesus is God, uh, but it's kind of just a different aspect of working with us. When you look at God the Father, we think of the Creator, we think of the One overall. But Jesus Himself actually came down as God to live and die for us. Look at Hebrews chapter 12. We're going to look at verse 2. Hebrews 12 and 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. There is an entire message right there. If you look at that, we realize first and foremost that Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. He's the beginning and ender of our faith. He is where our faith comes from. He's where our salvation comes from. He's how we have salvation because He paid the price. He paid the debt. Once we are saved by believing on Him and trusting in Him, then we're saved for eternity. And He holds that salvation. He is everything about it. The author and finisher of our faith. Oh, how great is Jesus. Oh, how much more thankful we should be. When you look at that and realize that, then what is this? He went for the joy was set before him. He endured the cross. And those three words are so small and they tell such a large story. Endured the cross. We could draw a picture of how bad the cross was. None of us would sign up to even take five seconds of it. Suffering and pain and, and, and agony and blood and everything that's poor, all the pain, all of it, and he endured it for us. They're despising the shame and, and where is Jesus now? Sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. And when we mess up, Jesus says he's making intercessions for us. Oh, oh, how thankful we should be. How thankful we should be. You know, it being the God's, you know, God's choosing, God could have looked down and, you know, He could have said, you know what, the world, it's not worth it. They're a bunch of crazy. They don't even love me. They don't care. Jesus could have said, you know what, I'm not going for them. I'm not going down there. Are you kidding? But you know what, Jesus came down here because He loved us. He came down. He gave up heaven and came down to earth and He was reviled. He was ridiculed, he was shamed, he was beaten, he was cold, he was hurt, he was just made fun of, he was crucified, blood, everything, run through with his spear. He did it all for us. He did not have to. And it really should make us feel bad every time God's calling us to do something and we say, no God, I don't have time. Can you imagine if Jesus would have said, no God, I don't have time for them? No, I'm not going to go down there and die on the cross for them. No, I'm not going to go down there and take that. No, I don't. You know, Jesus came down for us, lived for us, died for us. Why don't we live for Him? Why don't we turn it all over to Him? Why don't we give it all? Why are we holding on? Guess what? Everything we think we're holding on, you know what? I'll give God 90%, but I'm holding on to this little bit. That little bit isn't worth it. That little bit is temporal anyway. What are you going to do? Die and get before God and say, all right, now I'm ready. 
I mean, you can't, whatever you're holding on to, why? You know what, I agree, I agree, it's nerve-wracking, it's frightful, but we have a God that's bigger than fear. We have a God that can overcome fear. We have a God that's bigger than any problem, any obstacle that we have. We saw that last week looking at Moses. God basically finally told Moses to shut up and do it. Man, don't make God get to that point. When God's calling you to do something, just simply say, Yes, Lord, here am I. But we should be thankful for God. We should be thankful for Jesus. And how do we have fear? Or, uh, how do we overcome fear? There's one more. Let's get to go to John chapter 14. You know where I'm going now. John chapter 14. We're going to look at verse 16. Yes, we should be thankful for God. We should be thankful for Jesus. John 14, 16, we ought to be thankful for the Holy Spirit. And I think a lot of times in Baptist churches, we don't want to talk about the Holy Spirit because we're afraid that people will think we're Pentecostal. Well, I'm not talking about a Holy Spirit that makes you roll around on the floor and act ignorant because that's nonsense, that's heretical. But we have a Holy Spirit that is powerful living inside of us. We have a Holy Spirit that can overcome our fear. We have a Holy Spirit that will lead us, that will guide us, that will strengthen us, that will give us words, that will help us, that will take care of us. And here in John 14, 16, look how Jesus Christ Himself describes Him. He says, And I will pray the Father, and He shall give you another Comforter, that He may abide with you forever. When you put your faith in Christ, the Holy Spirit indwells you, and the Comforter is inside of you. What does the Comforter do? It makes you feel better. We should be joyful. We should be excited. We should feel good. We should be able to overcome any obstacle because the Holy Spirit is with us. Oh, we should be thankful for that. God didn't leave us alone. Jesus did not leave us alone. When He went back into heaven, He sent the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is inside each and every saved individual, and the Holy Spirit is inside this room right now. I promise you that, because more than two or three are gathered in His name. Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, is with us. And again, it's not making us silly, but we should praise God for the Holy Spirit, because there's power there. There's wonderful power, and I pray that if one here today that doesn't know Christ as your Savior, that you know the Holy Spirit's here because your heart is being twisted, you're being convicted, you're being drawn, and what you need to do is answer the Holy Spirit and say, all right, I surrender. <laughs> you need to give in. The Holy Spirit's working now. You may be saved, and I promise you as a saved individual, when God's wanting you to do something, that Holy Spirit conviction is just as strong as when you're needing to be saved. It's twisting you up, telling you you need to be a teacher on Wednesday night, or you need to give more, or you need to serve more, or you need to be baptized, or you need to join, or you need to, you need to do something. I promise you if the Holy Spirit's telling you you need to do it, you need to do it. There's so much. The Holy Spirit tells us when we need to be saved. The Holy Spirit tells us when we need to be baptized, when we need to join the church, when we need to be active. And if you've done all that and then you backslide and you go back out in the world and you stop being faithful, the Holy Spirit's going to make you miserable till you come back and be faithful. So many people in our world have gotten saved and have never become faithful and they're miserable and they're like, why'd God forsake me? And they go and they get drunk and they get on drugs because they're filling holes because God's forsaken me. No, you forsook Him and you're going to be miserable until you come back. Until you come back and forsake all and follow Him. And you don't need, you know, alcohol and the marijuana and all the other legalized stuff they're doing now. It's ignorant. We should quit pushing alcohol and marijuana on people and start telling them about Jesus Christ. And then telling them once you're saved, then you need to become a member of a New Testament church and then you need to become active. And when you do that, you'll be so busy serving God, you ain't got time to get drunk. Because you're serving God. And it's so much better feeling anyway. People say, oh, it feels good to do all this other ignorant stuff. You know what? When you finally surrender and serve God, it feels good to serve God. It just takes a lot of work. But it's worth it. It's worth it in the end. So we need to be thankful for God. We need to be thankful for Jesus. We need to be thankful for the Holy Spirit. Now go to Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3. We're going to look at verse 5 through 7. This goes right along. Titus chapter 3, we're going to look at verse, starting with verse 5. 
Titus chapter 3, 11 verse 5 says, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing and regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. When we have our faith and trust in Christ and we call upon him, we are saved, we are sanctified, we are justified, we become heirs with God, and we should praise God and be thankful every day for that. Sometimes we get saved and you know we, we go on weeks and months and years and years go by and we forget about it. We take it for granted. We should never take our salvation for granted, but we should be thankful every day for it. Thankful every day that I no longer have to fear hell and death. I no longer have to face the lake of fire. I no longer have to face an eternity without God because I believed in Jesus Christ. I called upon His name and so I'm saved, I'm secured, I'm sanctified, I'm justified forever, for eternity. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. Not man, not Satan, not the world, nothing. Oh, we should be thankful for that. Kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier. If we could lose our salvation, none of us would ever be saved. We'd lose it before we could get out the door. Because we're ignorant. We're sinners. We're crazy. We're people. That's why Jesus saves us and He saves us for eternity. Now what you can build up on and work on is once you're saved, you can start working and serving God. You start getting rewards stored up in heaven. And if you become unfaithful, you can lose those rewards. But praise God, or thank God, since it's Thanksgiving, we cannot lose that salvation. And thank God that it was free, right? You didn't have to pay for it. You didn't have to work for it. You didn't have to go to the cross for it. You know what you need for salvation? Maybe there's one here that doesn't know First of all, the Holy Spirit's convicting you. I'm done thankful for that. And you know who I'm talking to. If you're sitting there and the Holy Spirit's convicting you, you know who I'm talking to. You know how you get saved? You believe that Christ paid the price and is the Savior, and you simply ask Him to save you. Amen. Done. Simple. Oh, ain't it so wonderful that it's simple. That's so much simpler than cooking Thanksgiving dinner. Any of you ladies ever cooked Thanksgiving dinner? You know what I'm talking about. I honestly, I would have to like go to KFC and just buy a bucket of chicken if it wasn't for women. But I've seen ladies cook. You get up at like 4 a.m., you put the turkey in the oven, you baste it, you stuff it, you, you know what, I don't even know what you cook, stuff it, you cook it. It takes you like 12 hours to cook Thanksgiving dinner, and it takes all the guests 12 minutes to eat it, and then it takes you another 12 hours to clean it up because they all went and sat on the couch and watched football. Thanksgiving dinner is hard on women. Praise God, salvation is free and simple. Amen. Oh, if it was hard, none of us men would ever get saved. But it's free. It's simple. And we should be thankful for that. Now turn to Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. Colossians 3, 16. Colossians 3.16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. We should be thankful for the word of God. What is the word of God? The holy Bible you have with you. Are you thankful for that? You ever thought about that? If we, we, don't, we don't have time because we, we've got to, you know, we just don't have time right now. But if you studied the history of your English Bible, and I'm not going to go into histories of Spanish and all those other Bibles because nobody here speaks that. But the English Bible, millions and thousands and people have been killed throughout history because different groups did not want the Bible in English. They did not want it to be gave to the common man. There was a certain church that wanted to keep the word in Latin to themselves so they could lie to people and control people. And thousands of people died to translate the Bible into English so that everybody could have it. And even in today's world, there are still countries that burn Bibles and don't want the people having a Bible. Today we should be thankful thankful that we still have the Word of God and it's still free to read it. We can still look at it. We can still study it. That may end soon. Let's be thankful while it's here. 
Now I will promise you one thing, the Word of God will never totally disappear from this world because Jesus says it will be with us forever. But it may get extremely difficult to get your hands on a physical copy one day. There are groups right now in our government working to outlaw the Bible because it is a hate book. Because the Bible says homosexuality is wrong, so that makes the Bible a hate crime. So they're literally trying to outlaw the Bible in America. Not China. China's already outlawed. But in America they want to outlaw it because it says homosexuality is wrong. What they need to do is realize that if the Bible says it's wrong, they should start outlawing homosexual marriages. Don't change the Word of God. Change the laws of the land. Because God's Word is perfect and right. But right now, today, we're not there yet. Maybe in like, you know, three, four months. <laughs> but right now, we still have the Word of God. We should be thankful for it. That's why we need to study it. That's why we need to memorize it. That's why we need to learn it. That's why we need to keep it on. And that's why we need to be thankful. Because the Word of God is powerful. The Word of God is how you heard about salvation. The Word of God is how the preacher preached to you about salvation and about Jesus. It's how you got saved. It's how you learn. It's how you grow. It's how you mature. It's how you're sanctified. It's how you study in the morning. It's how you learn what God wants you to do. The Bible is so powerful. And we should be so thankful for it. God didn't just leave us alone, did He? It's the greatest instruction book, and I know a lot of us don't like reading instruction books, and most of y'all, I like reading instruction books. I like doing things right the first time. The Bible is the greatest instruction book man ever had. It's literally the mind of God put on pen and paper so that we could read it, so that we could understand it, so that we could be saved, so that we could grow, so that we could be disciples. It should not just be... I hope and pray that when you go home you don't just set it on a shelf and, and ignore it. We should be reading it daily. We should be studying it. We should be meditating on it. We should be praying over it. We should have our Bible in a prominent place so that we can study it. We should be truly thankful for the Word of God. Now turn to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. We're going to be in verse 15. Ephesians chapter 1, line at verse 15. This is Paul writing the church at Ephesus. Notice what he says. Paul says, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. What is that saying? It says Paul is being thankful for the church at Ephesus because they are being faithful. If Paul is thankful for a faithful church, should we today not be thankful for the church that we can be faithful in? And so the question is, are you thankful for Lakeview Missionary Baptist Church? We should be. And not just because it's a pretty building that goes on for literally like 12 miles. I don't know how that building just keeps going and going back there. I mean, it's a wonderful building, no doubt. But that ain't act. We should be thankful for the people that are here. The people that are sacrificing their time for the teachers, for the song leaders, for the musicians, for the people that are here to listen, for the people that are here to learn, for the ones that are here to worship God, to praise God, for the ones telling others about. We should be thankful for everything associated with Lakeview Missionary Baptist Church. For our brothers and our sisters. For the people. For the people that make others feel welcome. For the people that make people know that they're loved. Not to mention the fact that Jesus Christ is the head of Lakeview Missionary Baptist Church, and that's a blessing right there. To find the true New Testament church teaching the truth, teaching the Word, and following Jesus Christ. That's getting rarer in this world. Oh, we should be thankful for it. Kind of like the Bible, though. There, there are groups. You watch four or five months from now, possibly. People's going to start wanting to shut. We saw churches shut down this year for COVID, but there's groups wanting the church shut, shut churches down again because we are a hate group. Do you know that? Oh, churches that preach the Bible are a hate group. No, people that go against the Bible are hate groups. The Bible is love. 
The Bible is the most loving book you'll ever read because it tells you the story of how one Savior loved the world, gave Himself for the world, and because of that, if you love Him, you yourself can be saved too. It's a book of love, not hate. It's a book of love, not hate. You say, oh, it tells people. Yeah, you know why people are offended by the Bible? It tells them because the immorality, the sickness, the disease, the disgusting stuff you do is wrong and it's called sin. And instead of trying to justify your sin, you should repent of your sin and find Jesus. That's the correct answer. And so we should be thankful for this church. Again, not necessarily the building. If they shut churches down, we're going to find a barn somewhere in the woods. We may, who knows, we'll find something. Because we're still a church. If the build, think about it. If the building burnt tomorrow, we wouldn't go, oh, that's the end of Lakeview. No, it's just a building. We'd rebuild. We'd do something. Lakeview is Jesus Christ is the head and the people are the body. And we're assembled here to worship Him, to bring Him honor, to bring Him glory, and to say, Jesus, we're thankful for you. And through that, we should be thankful for one another and thankful for this church. Now turn to 2 Corinthians 4. This is the one nobody's going to agree with me on. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 4. You might agree, but you're like, well, I, I, I don't know. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Go to verse 16. 2 Corinthians 4, look at verse 16, says, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Notice 17, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. What does that mean? That means when we face tribulation, we should realize that it's for our benefit. And so since it's for our benefit, we're told in James that we should joy in tribulation, joy in temptation. So when we have hard days, we should be thankful to God for them. It's easy to be thankful for fun stuff, right? I mean, if God blessed you with money, woohoo! Thank you, Lord. God gave you a nice house, a good family, a wonderful cat, and a an ugly dog, and you know, big cars and grass and food. I mean, it's so easy to be thankful for the fun stuff. But God tells us to joy in the bad days too. Why? Because they help you grow. They help you mature, they help you get patience, they help you get stronger, and they very possible may be used as a testimony to someone else. So we should not just be joyful in the good days, we should actually be thankful in the bad days. They help us grow, they help us mature, they're building for us treasures in heaven. And so while I'm not saying like sell everything you have and make things as hard on you as possible, when God gives you a tough day, be thankful for it. Not to mention, I mean, he's there with you. He's guiding you, he's strengthening you, he's leading you, he's taking you through it. But we need to be thankful for God on the good days and thankful to God on the bad days. Which leads us to the last one. Turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. I could have started with this one and we had been done like 30 minutes ago. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. What does it say? It says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. What should we be thankful for? Everything. Yeehaw. Again, I could have started with that when we'd been done. It says, In everything give thanks. Now, now here's a question for you. Do you thank God every day for everything? You know, I get it. We, we get busy, don't we? We get busy. We get focused on ourselves. We get running around. By the time we go to bed, we crash. And before you know it, like three weeks have went by, and you're like, man, I ain't even told God thank you for anything. It happens. On good days, on bad days, for troubles, for trials, for families, for food, for God, for everything. It says, in everything give thanks. Why? It says, in everything give thanks, for this 
is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. God gives you everything, and in turn we should be thankful for everything. So often, though, we go, well, you know, if I had all the blessings that brother such and such had, sure, I'll be thankful. He's got it easy, right? No. We should be thankful in what God gives us because God gives us individually what He wants us individually to have. One of the Ten Commandments was to not covet what your neighbor had. We shouldn't focus on our neighbors. We shouldn't focus on what everybody else has. We should be thankful to God for what God has given us. And let's be honest, we have all been blessed. So today, tomorrow, Wednesday, Thanksgiving Day, Friday, and I ain't even going to talk about Black Friday sales because that's crazy, Saturday, all these other days, we should realize we need to be thankful for God. We need to be thankful for Jesus, thankful for the Holy Spirit, thankful for our salvation, right? Thankful for the Scriptures, thankful for our church, thankful for the hard days, thankful for the good days, and thank God for everything. Now today could be a great day of thanksgiving for someone. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you don't have a lot to be thankful for. You may thank, thank you to, you may have possessions, you may have a wonderful family, you may have great video games, I don't know. But if you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have nothing to be thankful for. Because all good things come from God. If you don't have salvation, if Christ isn't your Savior, you don't know what you have to be thankful for yet. But today could be the day of your thanksgiving. The Holy Spirit's moving you and you realize I'm lost. You realize you're not saved. You realize you don't know Christ. But in your heart you believe that Jesus is the Savior of the world. Then all you have to do is call upon Him and ask Him to save you. And today would be the day of your salvation. Oh, what a Thanksgiving day that would be. Be no greater day than the day of your salvation. If you're here today and you don't know Christ, I pray that you would call upon His name. I pray that you would take Him as your Savior and you could leave here today saved. And then you could really learn what real Thanksgiving is, what everybody else, what all the other saved individuals are, all the things we have to be saved for, for God, for Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the church, the Scriptures, everything we have from then on, you too could be thankful. So child of God, you have that. Child of God, you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You have the Scriptures. You have a church. You have your family. Are you thankful like you should be? If we were, I think we'd spend more time living for Him. We'd spend more time serving Him. We'd be more time just simply saying, Jesus, thank you. So wherever you're at in your life, as the song leader comes and the musicians come, wherever you're at in your daily walk, if you're lost, you need Jesus Christ as your Savior. I pray today you quit ignoring it, you quit fighting it, and you simply call upon Jesus. Jesus, I believe you to save the world. Please save me. And today you would be saved for eternity. Then, child of God, as we stand, we went through a list of things you can't be thankful for. Are you truly thankful for them. If you are, you need to tell Jesus about it. So as we sing, whatever need you have, simply go to Him and make it known today. As